Welcome everyone to this new and improved edition of the Layback Tech with the Samsung Galaxy 9 Plus. So I'm in selfie mode right now and I'm looking pretty good there. Okay, not really. Anyway, so I've got a motherboard that just came in and I'm doing a little bit of testing here. You can hear it next to me here, I'm sure. Um, I just got done finishing filming the video of the motherboard. Anyway. I didn't think about turning it off. Oh well. Uh, this is a slap and tickle video. Uh, I'm just showing this motherboard that I just got in. Testing it, putting it together, messing around with it a little bit. Uh, there will be a more uh, proper video in the future of this motherboard uh, once I get the operating system installed things like that. For now, i just wet your whistle a little bit with this one. All right, so we're going to be taking a look at this ASRock Socket 754 motherboard here. I got this off Amazon for $12, which included free shipping as well. And if you're interested in this board, there's the part number. Uh, this was the last one on Amazon, but uh, these motherboards are on eBay for about $14 to $16. So there's quite a few of these boards around. And they're very cheap. So I'm in need of a Socket 754 motherboard, as the one that I used a couple years ago in the Athlon 64 versus Pentium 4 video uh, died shortly after that video. And as it found out, I didn't have any more Socket 754 boards. So when I saw this for $12, originally saw the board on eBay for $15. And I thought I'd check Amazon, it ended up being only 12 on there. But anyway, I decided that it was probably a heck of a good buy. And it also make a good video because cheap retro parts don't come along very often. So what can you run on a Socket 754? Well, there's a lot of flavors of Athlon 64, single core, of course. We These are uh, only single channel RAM. So you're looking at first generation Athlon 64 stuff here. You also got the Semper Online. And you've also got what I'm going to be messing around with, actually, is the mobile Socket 754s. So I'm going to see if those work on this board, because I'm really kind of curious to overclock the piss out of the mobile processors and see how they compare with the desktop counterpart. ASRock is a pretty good company. And this board has a couple SATA ports there, your AGP and four PCI slots. Uh, it only has two memory slots on it, DDR, onboard audio, and PS2. So, I mean, this board is just about everything you really need for a nice retro uh, gaming system on the El Cheapo. So I'm going to go ahead and unbox this thing or unpackage it, unwrap it, it might be the more accurate term here, and uh, see what everything looks like here. Alright, here we go. We're going to do a smell test here. Hmm, it even smells brand new still. Okay, cool. Now one of the things I noticed about a lot of these vintage motherboards they claim to be new. And I, they look new. A lot of them do look new on eBay. I notice a lot of them have blown capacitors. And I guess... And I've, I've noticed that on a, a few times over the years. Uh, new computer, for example. A couple of them we had at work. Have at work, I should say. The Pentium 3s. Uh, were new in the box, yet they had blown capacitors on them. So... I guess these capacitors, due to the chemistry and makeup of them, tend to go belly up over time, even if they've never had any power applied to them or heat. But I noticed a good majority of motherboards that are new tend to have blown capacitors on there for sale on eBay, so it's a good idea to take a look at that before you even purchase it. There's a image of the board. Take a close look at the caps to make sure they're not bulged and split and leaking there. And this one seems to be fine. I don't see anything. Uh, 
terribly dramatic going on with the caps. Cool. All right. Now it's time to go ahead and test this thing and see if it works. And with the magic of not video editing, but the pause button, it's basically put together here for test. Got the 6800 GT here. A couple gig of RAM, which is all this is going to handle. And I got a lowly little Semperon 2600 in there. Yeah, might put this big old behemoth of a copper cooler on there. Maybe just not quite yet, though. Alright. Let's get the monitor cranked on here. And the computer is on. Okay. And it powered on without having a power button to push. And we are getting warm here. And I don't see anything posting to this monitor. Alright. Let's see what's going on here and try this again. Alright, I'm going to try an Athlon 64 chip in here. And again, we still have no post. Hmm. Okay. Well, that doesn't inspire me with a whole lot of confidence, but then again, I'm not, not entirely sure that all these chips are good. I don't really know. That sucker is mother... F that sucker is hot. Holy shit, that thing is hot. Might not be a good chip. Oh man, if you could smell that. Whew. Shouldn't have gotten that hot that fast. And I know I don't have a heat sink on it, but damn. This one's not getting that hot, but it's also not posting either. No, 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 there it goes. I just heard it. There we go. Semperon 3400. Cool. So I've got some bad chips here, I guess, huh? Well, let's see if this will post with a, uh, with a uh, mobile chip. I just uh, so happen to have one. All right, let's give that a whirl. And one thing about these mobile chips is that they don't have the heat spreader. So that means you kind of have to make the heat sink fit on there, and I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. But I've got this guy right here. So let's see if that will just kind of rest on there maybe. I, I, I don't know. I don't see the thermal. Of course, I don't know if that's actually still goopy. No, it is not. Okay. Let's see if it's contacting here with some real thermal compound that's not hard. All right, let's test this out. Do we get a contact patch here? That's what I'm just looking for. Nope. Well... A little bit on there. Now there's a little bit, but not really enough. Let's see if this guy does any better or not. And I, I just needed to sit on here. I don't want to burn it up. I guess that's on there centered. Ah, there we go. 
That looks better. Okay. This is just for a test, guys. That's all it's for. Will we get a post? <clears throat> Apparently not. Okay, so this is a Turion 64. I'd read that they're supposedly working these boards. And the Athlon 64 mobile chip does too. thought they'd be the same thing, but unless this chip is bad, it doesn't work on this. And that's what they said when I was reading that. Not all motherboards support the mobile chips. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll mess with that another time. But for now, well, it appears that the Semperon chip is the only one that I have at the moment that's working. Socket 754, which is a little bit of a bummer. This sucker got real, real hot. <clears throat> kind of wonder if, uh, I wonder if that motherboard killed that chip or if that chip killed the motherboard. It's, it's hard to tell on this stuff. Probably don't even really need thermal compound on this. Uh, you always need thermal compound. You always need thermal compound. You know, it's amazing how well, sometimes you can get away with not putting thermal compound on stuff. It's really quite interesting, actually. But I need to do that. Because we're going to be installing... operating system so that I can do benchmarks. So I'm just going to use this Athlon cooler. I think this came off of a might have been FX 80, 80, 100, 80, 300, 60, 100, something like that. Should be more than adequate for a lowly little Semperon chip. Okay, which way? Oh, there we go. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell which way those things are locked and unlocked. Okay, this does have a four pin CPU header right there, so we'll see in the BIOS if it has the options for PMW. Uh, I can't remember what the other setting is right at the second, but anyway, we'll find that out. Okay, we got this loud fan going here. Let's take a look at the BIOS here. Let's see what we got in here for overclocking. We got some pretty decent options here. CPU AGP sync. Okay. Async. Okay, so we can adjust the AGP independent from the CPU speed. I like that. I like that. So what do we have here? We got one step increments. I wonder what our maximum... Oh, uh, 300 is our maximum. There it says right there on the side. If I just go ahead and read that. 
Okay. Up to 100 megahertz on the AGP. That's kind of fun to play with. Multiplier. We shouldn't be able to change the multiplier. It might be able to go lower on it. Yeah, we can go down. Oh, we can go down to 800 megahertz. That, that's interesting. So we can go down to a gigahertz. Let's see, just see if we go to gigahertz here on that. Let's drop this down. Let's just lower the voltage a little bit here. We don't need that much voltage for a gigahertz. Okay, looks like we're running pretty good on everything here. Temperatures look fine. Can change our okay, cool. Interesting. Interesting options. Eight, you can change that 8 to 16 bit. That's interesting. Dram voltage ultra high. Huh? Hmm. Well, you can adjust the AGP voltage. That's kind of interesting. I would like it if it actually said what those voltages were, what how high ultra high really is over what uh, the default is, but. That's all right. So looks like we can do raid on here too. Probably won't do that. We are seeing the SATA. Okay, so the SATA is the raid. Okay, and we are seeing that. Non. I wonder if that's going to require me to download a driver. I wonder for XP to see the hard drive. MIDI port. That must be an add-on cable or something, because this motherboard doesn't actually have a MIDI header on it. It's a 15-pin header on it. Boot settings. Yeah, I think that battery's most likely flat. 2009, so this... Assuming this battery is completely dead, and I'm sure it is, if that's... 2009, that's actually a fairly new motherboard BIOS. There is a. I'm surprised I didn't go back to like 2003 or 4 or something like that. It's usually what they did. So, that's interesting. I don't know. Okay. Well, I'd say, uh, you know, if you want to go back and pause the video, look at all these options here. If you're curious about what the BIOS options are. You're definitely free to do that here. I'm just going to go through these very quickly. So you can pause the video and take a look at those yourself. You can adjust quite a bit of stuff here. So this is going to be a good motherboard for uh, messing around with. Because that's ultimately what I do on this channel is mess around with computer gadgets. Let's see if this thing actually will boot up at a gigahertz. <clears throat> Yes, it does. So, in theory, I should be able to compare this to a Pentium 3 1 gigahertz, Athlon 1 gigahertz, and just see uh, how much better an Athlon 64, or in this case a Semperon, is to the K7 or Pentium 3 at the same clock speed. So that's going to be an interesting future video. Well, that's probably going to do it for this video, but, uh... Oh, there we go. Oh, I have to say, I'm looking very good right now. <laughs> oh, anyway, take care. Peace out. And we'll see you again here on the Wayback Tech Channel. Hmm. <laughs>